Okay, practice number seven, connotational analysis in Atlas CI. We have done a lot this semester, a lot. You can say at the end of this semester that you can do or you are, have learned uh, enough things to do a qualitative marketing research style from the beginning till the end. The planification, the implementation, and the analysis. And if you remember the analysis, we are using Atlas TI, that is a software. Uh, we use that software to, to, to do the analysis in three levels, textual analysis, in textual, if you remember the quotations, was the, the tool, conceptual or contextual analysis, the second level, and in that level, we included codes and family of codes. And finally, the, um, oh, the last one, <laughs> I forgot. Uh, uh, oh, it's right? uh, organizational analysis. And in the last one, we have used a couple of tools, the, the semiotic table to identify the different profiles of people that this is your, 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 uh, your business, your company. And the second one was the network views, this network uh, graphs or views. Okay, all that part was what we say, the analysis of the discourse. In uh, Throughout the course, the, the, the academic semester, we have analyzed the discourse. We have basically analyzed words. We have performed interviews, we have transcribed these interviews, and we have analyzed basically the sentences, sentences, words, but just that, sentences. But there is a problem because if we analyze only the transcriptions, we are losing a lot of information or we can lose a lot of information. As I told you at the beginning of the semester, it's not the same, it's not the same to say this subject is great than to say this, this subject is great. But if you we write this sentence or many other sentences, we uh, we uh, lose the uh, emotional element linked to the uh, interviews or the focus group. So in connotational analysis, we are going to try to identify these kind of things, visual things, vocal things that can complement the um, the the discourse. So, this is an interesting quotation that I usually use from Peter Drucker. I think he says something like, the most important thing about communication is to listen what is not said. If we are doing an interview, for example, an in-depth interview, we can gather a lot of information. But sometimes when people that or when, when a person is uh, nervous because he or she doesn't want to say something, we know there is something missing there. And we can, how can, can we realize there is something to ask about? Because of that, people talk uh, latency time, it, it takes time to the person to give an, an answer, or maybe because he or she is nervous or any other thing. So, Basically, based on this idea, of course, the percentages I'm going to show you changes. It's not, but basically, in communication, is conformed by three elements, and the weight of each element is more or less like this. Visual elements are 55% of the elements. Vocal elements, 38%, and verbal elements are 7%. So if we analyze only the transcription, the verbal element, maybe we are losing out of information. I have realized of that in many ways, but in my life, in my personal life, uh, I, I don't know if I, if I said that in class, but I have a, well, it's not a baby yet. Well, he's, he's not a baby because he's two years and a half, but he was a baby, my first baby, uh, some years ago. And he, when he was very, very uh, uh, young, he has a lot of problems to sleep, a lot of problems to sleep. Now it's better. We are having a friend, but at the beginning it was horrible. And 
whenever I could make him sleep for a while, imagine I was in my living room. In fact, he uh, was born close to the COVID uh, pandemic and all these things. We were at home the whole day. As soon as I could make him sleep, I was, imagine, the, in, the, in the living room. I put him in whatever, and he was sleeping. But I couldn't watch the TV with sound, any sound. His perception was great. So I started watching things only visual, vocal missing, but and verbal, well, it depends. As you know, the translation, the subtitles miss a lot of information, a lot of information. And I realized that the most important thing are the visual in some cases. I have also realized of that because I like watching films in, in the original language. Of course, if you watch a film in English, it's not going to be a problem. But if you watch a film in Korean, it's completely different. Maybe you don't understand any word. But if you translate the verbal things, you lose a lot. Of course, you understand what they are saying, but emotion is lost. Because this kind of uh, translators are like this. So, visual, vocal, and verbal. And we have already analyzed the verbal part, and not the visual and the vocal, and this is what we are going to do in this practical session. So, we are going to try to think, to see how people externalize their opinions, not just in terms of, of words, but also by analyzing non-verbal elements, non-verbal elements, visual, vocal, and many other things. So, connotation, here you have a definition, an idea, feeling, which a word invokes for a person in addition to the literacy or primary meaning. So, when we are analyzing a transcription, what we are reading is basically the primary meaning. What does this sentence, a specific sentence, is saying? This. My question is, what does the person that is saying this word or this sentence want to say? And sometimes in this want to say, we need to analyze other things. This is why I told you, I remember when you were doing the fir your first recordings of in the interviews or focus groups, some of the groups Mainly, as they said, some group said, we have done the interview, it's 30 minutes, whatever, but we have forgotten using the video. We only have audio, sound. Is it okay? And my answer was, well, I think I didn't answer, but my answer was verbally. Well, it's partially okay, because if in this uh, practice now, today, I ask you to look for visual things, if you don't have a video, you cannot find visual things, basically. You can only, and if you don't record even the sound, you don't have a uh, vocal thing. So, uh, what kind of things are, are we looking for? Body language, silences, reactions, whatever. These kind of things are the things we are going to look for. Our idea is to complement, as I told you, the analysis in Atlas PI. We have done 90% of the things we are going to do in the semester. But this 10% can be interesting. Is it always going to be interesting? Trying to find connotational things, it depends. There are people, for example, that have no emotions. I'm not joking. It's true. When you interview somebody, it's like, if he or she is dead, it happens. If this happens, it may be difficult to find this kind of connotation because it doesn't matter if he's happy, sad, nervous, it's always the same. But in general, it doesn't happen. When a person is happy, when he or she is telling something, you can notice, you can see in the body language, in the expression, in the tone of the voice, and so on. Uh, this Connotational analysis is, is especially important when we are analyzing customer experience. Because when we are analyzing customer experience, probably the, ta the 
the tone of the interview is going to be more or less stable until the person finds or answers something that, for example, she or he has liked. When he or she has liked something, you are going to see in, the, in her face, smile, explanation, further explanation without asking and so on. And the opposite. If I ask you, for example, about what is your opinion about this class in an interview, and you don't want to say it's trash, I don't like the lecture, whatever, your face is going to tell me the things that your words are not. So this is the thing we are looking for. We want to try to complement. Uh, and also, in some cases, this kind of connotational element, in cases, for example, of a, of a focus group, we are going to analyze not only the, the reaction of one individual, but of the group, of the interaction between individuals. I'm going to tell you why this is important. Imagine in an in-depth interview that I have only two people. The interviewer and the interviewee, two. So there is not going to be more interaction than two by two. But if we go to the situation like a focus group, there is going to be more interaction because I'm, imagine that I'm the interviewer, I'm going to ask something to the group and the group, consciously or unconsciously, they are going to interact between themselves. At the end of this group, we always have individuals that are more leaders than others. There are people that are more um, quiet than others, more calm, more whatever. So this can happen in a in a in a focus group, and we can we need to realize uh, or to analyze these elements as well. Of course, this this is if we are talking about. A, copy, a traditional focus group where all the individuals are together. If it's an online focus group, for example, using a platform like Skype or, or Zoom or any other, this kind of direct interaction disappears. There's no direct interaction because they are not together. The only interaction is because they are hearing the opinion of other people. Just that. Okay, so this is the things we are going to do. This is what I told you more or less. Until now, we have analyzed with Atlas PI a lot of things. What we have done is it's called content analysis. We have analyzed the content. We have analyzed the discourse. But we need to analyze more things. For example, body language, the movement of the hands, eyes, uh, uh, the gestures. Uh, <sighs> Parasitic gestures, this is like um, uh, unconscious movements. When somebody do movements without uh, having a notion that they are doing, uh, body mimic, physical reaction, and other things. In general, in this uh, semester, we are going to analyze two things, basically. We are going to have a video. We are going to watch again the videos. We have one, two, three, in their interviews. And now in this, by, by watching the, these, these videos again, we are going to look for uh, connotational elements, evident connotational elements. I mean, I don't want you to watch uh, in their interview and find 45 connotational elements. I want you to find, to find, to find five things that are very clear. Seven to eight, a short number, a tier. And we say, okay, where this element happened in the minute number 5.1. In this moment, we ask the individual regarding this, and he or she did this. He doesn't want to, uh, or he didn't want to answer. He was whatever. Describe the element, but clear element. It's not necessary to find 25. Per, 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 per uh, interview. Another thing, as you see, we are going to do this task in a mechanic way. We are going to use that, just your perception as interviewers, as researchers of the videos. You are going to see the videos again, and you are going to try to identify connotational. It can be visual, 
touching his or her hair, uh, whatever. Um, or it can be vocal. He was very, she was very happy because I, we noticed that the, his or her voice, whatever. He was, she was doubting, she was nervous, whatever, vocal. But we can use also some, uh, in this case, neuroscience uh, devices. We could do that in this way, or we could do it by using other types of devices. We are not going to do this, this in this event, in this, in your projects, but we could. I mean, whenever you have, there are the recording, the video recording, for example, you can use software to analyze facial uh, recognition, uh, image recognition. There are a lot. The problem is that the recording must be high quality. The, the, the lighting must be good and so on. This is one way, not for you to interpret, but also to use some kind of, of uh, algorithm. I'm going to show you. I imagine you have seen in class chapter the chapter regarding uh, new observational techniques, and one of, in one of them, probably Carla have talked about this uh, regarding neuroscience. Facial recognition. There are many. What was facial recognition? No, emotional. There are many. Let me see if this, I can eliminate this or move it somewhere. Emotional analysis. So there are software, there are software that if you have an in interview, for example, or any kind of information with a face, with a good quality and of course good lighting, you can analyze automatically. And it's going to say 30% sad, 50% whatever. It's okay, problem or uh, not problem. Uh, important thing, if you want to use this kind of thing, neuro, neuroscience, uh, neuroscience devices, any kind of device, you need to ask this when you are doing the interview. If I record, and I, when I record someone in an in-depth interview, I need to ask for the info, uh, informed consent, consentimiento informado. In this informed consent, I, I need to say, okay, we are going to record your image. We are not going to publish your image in anywhere. It's just for the analysis. And we are going to use this software to analyze the emotional recognition. In any, in any other case, we can use any uh, kind of connotational uh, information. For example, if I'm doing a, an in-depth interview, I, I can use a GSR, galvanic response, uh, skin response. I, I'm sure you have also seen this in class with Carla. It's a device like this. I can ask the individual when he or she is doing the, the interview to wear a, a device like this. And with this kind of devices, we can analyze other things regarding emotional reaction. We can do it manually or we can use some kind of device. In any case, if we use some device, we need to ask for the permission of the individual. Okay? Okay, so this is what we are going to do. Try to find uh, connotational elements of the discourse. Let's go to try to link this to other practices. In practice number four, if you remember, the first practice were for the planning of the, of the study, we included the element called memos, observational notes, theoretical notes, and many other notes, the memos. And I told you, memo is a, like a di difficult word. I prefer, instead of using the word memo, using the word positive. This is the kind of positive you use when you want to highlight something. You are studying a book. For an exam, and you use a positive to say, this is important, this is not important. Don't, don't study this because 
the lecturer haven't taught in class, whatever. So this is the thing, memos. And if you can see, we are going to use these memos now because the several other things. And uh, we, uh, you have nowadays your hermeneutic unit. And in your hermeneutic unit, you have all the primary document. You have primary document one, two, three, for example. Interview one, two, focus group. What we are going to do now is to review the videos to see if there are things that could be conversational. So what I would do if I were you is to put the video and to open my um, hermeneutic unit. And whenever I'm watching the video, in the mobile phone, whatever, and you have your computer open or in two, in two uh, windows, in, in, for me it's easier because I have two, two screens. But if you only have one screen, half for one, half for the other, you can watch the video. And whenever something interesting happens in the video regarding vocal elements or visual elements, you can stop the video, find the, the minute, go to the hermeneutic unit, and create a memo. Observational, no, whatever. The person smiles, space, and you can explain a little bit. Because this is what you're going to use later. I didn't tell you this, what I'm going to say now, because I didn't want you to upload the videos. But Atlas TI, we have, throughout the course, we have a, a used a, in, the, in Atlas TI, we have only used the transcription. But Atlas TI allow you to upload the videos. Maybe you have your video in your computer, the video of the, but you could drag the video into the Atlas TI and you can have everything together. In fact, when I do a study, I put the videos all in Atlas TI. Why I didn't tell you this before? Because if you do so, this hermeneutic unit, the, the weight would be too much and you could not upload it in the, in the submission. This is the reason. But it could be that. In any case, is to review the video, open. I'm going to see the, to watch the first video. Open the video, open the primary document, and create some memos, observational notes. Analyzing or trying to find emotional things regarding both positive and negative regarding the interview. Okay? So here you have some examples of things that could be found. This is one of the groups of the first year, uh, three years ago. Uh, for example, I have put some of these in English because it's in Spanish. Not with the head, when you say, you don't want to say yes, but like saying okay. This goes with pleasure, distraction, smile, visual connection. When a person wants to say something, Important, visual connection is important. When a person, for example, doesn't want to answer a question, what we do or is to avoid visual connection. Because if you have this visual connection, the next question is, and this is, and why, why is this? It's the same one that happened when I ask a question to the class. When I, I ask you a question, some people start watching the mobile phone, other people, if something is happening outside, they don't want to, this kind of connection. Because it's like, what, what is your opinion? See, there you nervous, play, touch a uh, kiss or her hair, many observational elements, visual or vocal. And here you have an example also of, of how can this information can be summarized. And this is an example of first year. The first year we, uh, we were in this subject, all the groups, three, four people group, they must, they, they did one, two, three, four, five, six interviews and two focus group of five people. And they didn't complain. This year, I don't know the number, but you have all complained in the Spanish group and in the English group. But I'm joking, but it's, it's a fact. They did a lot. What? So one way to summarize the information, when, once you have put, all the different observational notes or whatever to do a table. This is too much. It's not possible that a group have found 193 reactions. 
not possible, too much, too, too many. In general, too many. Or maybe, of course, this reaction can happen, but we are looking for very clear reaction. If a person cuts his or her hair all the time, you don't need to repeat this 20 times. But I don't, can I, can, can you see my point? So this is the thing. So don't be obsessed with, I need, we need to find more because in the example, there were 193 and we only have 20. If there are 20 clear, it's great. Better 20 clear than 60, not very clear. Uh, another element, for example, what I told you, interview. This is an in-depth interview of another group. And what they did was a notebook where they included, for example, the first interview, Blanca. Can be a real name or can be a fictional name. Blanca, the first interview. And they found several elements. They had some reaction, and what they did, the group did, was to explain. La entrevistada describe a su pareja como una persona torpe, de forma irónica, para explicar qué le sucedió en el bar en el apartamento y cómo se eh, les atendieron a raíz de su gusto. I have said this in Spanish. Basically, put briefly the reaction and explain a little bit the context on what, on where, how this reaction or where this reaction happened. The same for a focus group, as you say, the meaning, the reaction, irony, uh, follow, I don't know how to say follow, uh, angry. Yeah, angry, angry or something like that. Eh, angry, falta de indicaciones especificando la hora de cierre de las puertas del recinto. They didn't give enough information when the doors of the restaurant or whatever, or Green Sea, closed at night, for example. So they were angry for that. This, this, this is something that usually happens. You are in a bar, you order for a new drink, and they serve you the drink, and they, whenever they are serving you the drink, they say, time need to go. I will know that. I wouldn't order this drink, but, but. Okay, so here we have, um, one second, the link of this uh, connotational element with practice number with four memos and observational notes. And the second link we are going to analyze is the relationship between the experience, customer experience generators and connotational elements. So what are we looking for now? We are trying to look for examples in the videos that are related to some of these uh, uh, connotational elements. For instance, imagine we are talking about the staff. Can we find, find in the video some um, emotional, connotational elements related to the staff that have served us or that we then were working in the thematic park, restaurant, or hotels? Could be positive or could be negative. Okay, so the idea is to fill this, uh, this box with examples. Here you have some examples of previous years. For example, Uh, well, I don't remember how I call it in English. Let me see. Uh, space environments. And they say, this is a, just an example how they presented that I thought it was good. And this is why I bring it here. Spatial. Not that observational note. N-O. Lo cuenta con emoción. He or she is telling this with emotion. This is like the summary. Telling this with the most. And they say, en la entrevista, la mía de 12 años, está eh, de la, del documento primario 4, relata con ilusión y motivación el recorrido por el túnel de los tiburones relacionados con one, many things here. I'm going to say it in English now. First thing, they have interviewed an underage people, person, less than 18 years, no problem. I, I'm sure they ask to the parent for the uh, informed consent. 
As you know, if you we interview people below 18 years old, well, the legal age in different countries, you know that the legal age is not the same in countries, in Spain is 18 years old, we need to ask for the express consent of the parent. But take, taking this apart, then the child explain with illusion, motivation, whatever, the one part, one visit to the park. Okay? So, uh, this gusto. And the, here they, they explain why they think there was this feeling. Uh, this conformidad, smile, that, whatever. So the idea is to identify for each of the different um, customer experience generators some examples, can be positive or negative, of connotational emotion. Okay? In some cases, it's going to be easier. In other cases, more difficult. Well, in general, it's not going to be difficult. And finally, last but not, not least, the timing of the process. This is something that is, I have already talked about this, the, the timing thing, because in this table, when I show you this table, I included this mean, this timing. It's more or less there. But I'm going to tell you more about the timing. Whenever we are doing using in the interview, it's interesting in the interview of focus group. It's interesting that for each of the interviews, we create something like this. This is a time, uh, a timing, or a, yes, a, a time graph. As you see, presentation, block one, whatever, different blocks divide the interview in terms of time. Why? It's interesting. Because imagine we are doing an interview. You are going to do, in fact, a report. If you do a report in the methodological part, you are going to put the duration of the different interviews you have, and, but you are not going to put the whole transcription. The whole transcription goes always to the appendix, to the last part of the report. You never put these kind of long things in the middle because this difficult the reading. When you are doing a study, how to summarize the information you can have in an interview without putting all the transcription in the middle of the text with a time and graph like this? Because you are saying, first block, we are talking before, we have divided whatever, six minutes. During, we have a talk about this, this, and that. 12 minutes, open questions, whatever. If we have three in the interviews, imagine how would I put this in a report? Instead of putting one of these in the page, as you know, when we are writing a report, usually Word or any other or a processor, uh, the, the page is even in a, in a vertical way. What I usually do, when I have many of these, imagine three uh, in the interviews and one focus group, what I do is to change the way the page, one page is presented. I put it horizontally, and what I put is a table like this with one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. In this way, a person in the same page they have information about the, the time a person have spent in each of the different elements. Why? Because imagine that one in the interview has spent, we, remember we have the a before, during, and after. And we expect to have that most of the information come from the during the experience. But the during the experience uh, block the time that it lasts in the different interviews is different. And sometimes maybe in the first interview we, we, we didn't know very well how to do it. And you know, this during was five minutes. And in the second one we well, well we, we knew more about doing interviews and it's 15 minutes. And it makes sense you have found more things in the second or the third or the first one. Can you see my point? So basically you need to create something like this. Uh, I know, well, so this is the thing. 
the whole timing of the interview. And by using this, you can create also the table I showed you before. Notebook of connotative communication, the meaning, the reaction, and the observation. This is this table is the one that I show you here. Whenever you watch the, uh, the video, you report the meaning, the reaction, and the observation, the explanation, brief explanation. When this happened, when we ask to the person this, he or she, whatever. Short, two lines. Timing, important. Uh, here you have examples, presentation, warming up questions, reason of the visit, reasons of the visit to the scenographic, whatever. Well, different blocks. You can divide the blocks as you want. You don't need to copy uh, or to follow exactly my, as you think is better. Of course, with the time. Here we have a couple of examples of, of another uh, study. And finally, timing of the process and what I call social experience. When we are doing an interview, there are different positions. When we are doing any kind of data gathering, but especially qualitative data gathering, like focus group, in the interviews, and all these things, interactive uh, um, techniques, we can work in, a, in, in two ways. We can try to be as much obje as, as objective or as much objective, uh, objective as we can. Just try to find the information that the individual is willing to share. Or maybe we can do something to force a reaction. Imagine that I do an interview and I, I have done two, three, four, five, and I I know that my hotel have a problem with the waiter of the restaurant. I know as a fact, but now one wants to say anything. So maybe one interview, what I can do is to make up something and say, do you know that we have received a lot of complaints regarding, what is your opinion? We are trying to force the individual by introducing new information. This can be done to, to incorporate external elements to, to analyze the reaction of individuals. Could be done. Okay. So here you have an example of the different things we can use. And this is more or less what we are going to do in practice number seven. So summarizing, and now I'm going to jump to, to, to the practical submission. First thing, you need to watch again the videos. So put the video in one screen, and in each of the videos, start creating memos, specific memos, vocal memos, or visual memos. Vocals are related to the tone, the emotion, when, whenever they are delivering the sentences, and visual, of course, think that could be perceived, can be perceived by watching. Whenever you have this, you need to create the different tables I have shown you before. So I'm going to end the video.